Good morning. So glad to be with you on Tuesday. And uh, it's turning out to be a great week, right? We had, uh, it's a short week. We got to enjoy Memorial Day yesterday and we're back um, back in the swing of things today, Tuesday. Hey, um, I'm sorry this is late. I actually tried to uh, do this recording on another um, on another camera and uh, it just didn't work out very well. So I've been the whole morning trying to get it out to you. So it is uh, it is what it is. I apologize. I know um, some of you get frustrated when I get it out late. So please forgive me. Um, I am truly sorry. Uh, every so often we try something a little different. Um, so just want to please um, remind you to uh, check out the, um, the survey. Um, it's on our, uh, website. It's, if you get these, uh, devotions via email, um, you'll see it down, um, in the email here today. Um, so those are, those are the places you can grab it and fill that out. Um, we just want to know where you're at. Uh, we're, we're planning to, uh, open on the 7th of June we're working towards that. We're getting the building ready, um, getting things set up. It's going to look different. It's definitely going to look different. Um, I just uh, talked to someone uh, a little while ago. They just threw caution to the wind and, you know, kind of um, not worrying about any of the restrictions and stuff. We're not going to do that. And that's fine. Listen, it's not a judgment on any other churches or what they're doing. Um, we're going to do our best to be as... Um, responsible as we possibly can be, um, but at the same time, and we're going to talk about this today in our devotion, um, we trust God, um, so we're going to marry common sense with faith, and uh, we're going to open up on the 7th and hope you'll be able to join us. Listen, if you're nervous or worried or anxious, um, stay home. Okay, we're we're going to have um, we're going to continue our online services, so that'll that'll continue to happen. Um, we will uh, it'll look very different here at the church. You'll you'll come through one entrance. So on the ninety five side, the way I'm pointing is to ninety five behind me. Um, on the ninety five will be one entrance, um, or else we'll do the side entrance, and we may do the side because that's got. Uh, bigger door. Um, so it'll be come through one entrance and then, um, you'll be able to use the restrooms, the facilities, uh, obviously, but once you're in the sanctuary and you're seated, we need you to stay there, uh, because then we start contaminating, um, everything possibly and whatnot. We're going to be, uh, cleaning, um, either during the service, depending on how many people uh, volunteer to help us out with that. We can use volunteers. Uh, door, we'll have two services, so if you came and you helped us out through ser first service, you'd be able to be part of second service. If you're at second service, you can help us out at first service. Uh, at, you know, at the end of the service or however we um, are able to do that, have everything cleaned at the end of both of those services so it's ready for either the next service or we're, we're uh, clean for, um, for the week. We, um, so, you know, things will be clean. Um, we're going to do tables. We're going to have a few tables in the sanctuary for families. And uh, there'll be activities for our kids. Uh, we'll also have some seating. Um, if, you, if you don't want to sit at the table or you're not with families, there'll be seating there. Um, as I said, the uh, bathrooms were, were we need people to come stay in the service and um, and then we'll have the exits right from the sanctuary. So you won't come back through the building, you'll exit right from we're, we're kind of blessed to have that uh, in our sanctuary. So we actually have two exits there. Uh, one is through a closet, but we're gonna have that all cleared out. It's gonna be fine. You'll be able to exit there or at that door at the back of our sanctuary. Um, we will require, uh, per state regulations, we will require masks. And, uh, so you'll, uh, use masks. We won't be hugging. That's going to be a hard part for us here at Shoreline, but, um, maybe a little fist bump here and there. And, uh, 
you know, they're, they're, we won't have the time to be able to stand around in the foyer like we normally do, which is a big part of who we are here at Shoreline. But you'll be in the sanctuary, socially distanced. Um, that'll be set up. And you'll be able to, you know, you'll still be able to talk and, and uh, you know, spend some time with each other. Uh, obviously, outside um, the building uh, where, you know, it's a little easier, those will be places that you can um, spend some time talking as well. It's getting into the nicer weather. So it's going to look a little different, but uh, the, the service also will be shorter. We're going to... Um, you know, if you've noticed, we made the services a little shorter already. Uh, we're going to stick with that format, um, so you're not, so it's not so long. For instance, having not gone to the bathroom and with your kids and those kind of things. Uh, so it's, it's going to be a little different, but uh, a lot of the best parts are are going to be the same. We we want to see your face. We want you to see our face. We uh, want you to see each other's faces. Um, so th that's where we're at. And, uh, we'd love to know, you know, we, we're kind of getting an idea of how many people are, are on board with being with us on Sunday mornings and how many people are still kind of struggling with that. And, and again, there's no judgment on that where you're at is where you're at and, uh, what you feel comfortable with is, is fine. So, um, fill out that, that, uh, that, uh, survey and let us know where you're at. Okay, I've taken an awful lot of time on this, but I know that's the burning question everyone has. So I want to talk to you uh, about one of my favorite characters in the Bible, and character is definitely the word for this guy. His name's Jonah, and I want to give you a little bit of a uh, background. Um, you, you may know Jonah in the, in the great whale or the fish, however your uh, Bible interpretation says it, but um, so Jonah you know, get swallowed by the fish. But what's the backstory of that? Let me give you just a little bit of that real quick and then we'll we'll make it applicable for us. So Jonah is sent by God in Jonah chapter 1. And uh, we're going to read Jonah chapter 1, verse 3. We're right into the start of the story and you'll see where we're at with it. God sends Jonah to a place called Nineveh. Now, you and I hear that. It's, it's a lost city. It doesn't exist anymore. And... Um, we go, okay, so Nineveh. So so God sends this prophet to Nineveh, just go to Nineveh and preach. And as you know, or if you know the story, Jonah says, no, I don't want to go to Nineveh. And he gets on a ship and he leaves. And that's going to be our scripture today. And you may look at that and go, man, Jonah, what the, I mean, what, what's the problem? Why, 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 why not just go and preach? We got to understand that Nineveh, the Ninevites, were savage people. Um, they they did things that are just unimaginable to us today. Um, they would they would literally fillet people and and take the skin off while they were filleting them, burning them at the. I mean, they did things that were just unthinkable, uh, unthinkably barbaric. To us today, and so God says to to Jonah, "I want you to go to Nineveh and preach. And if you don't go to Nineveh and preach, I'm going to destroy them if they don't turn from their wickedness and and turn to me." Now, if you're Jonah, wouldn't you want these people to be destroyed? I mean, like God, if 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 I have to choose between you destroying these barbaric people and you sparing them, like destroy them. I, I, I don't want to see these people. And, and the other side of this is, is what if they don't? <laughs> what if they don't uh, respond well to this? I don't want to be filleted. Like, this, this, these, are, these are some really bad characters. So before you judge Jonah too harshly, you got to know, know that. That's a little bit of the backstory. It's not really where we're going, but I, I think the backstory is important. Jonah chapter 1, verse 3, this is my point. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed to Tarshish. Let me go, Tarshish, that sounds familiar. That's where the Apostle Paul's from. Jonah went down to Joppa where he found a ship bound for that port after paying. Okay, so, so if Nineveh is this way, Tarshish is that way, okay? So after paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. What's my point? My point is... There are, there are times when we know what God wants us to do and we do the opposite. 
It's really the hardest part of my job as a pastor. Um, there's a lot of things that are hard about pastoring, but really the hardest, hardest, hardest part is to spend a moment with someone like we're doing right now and say, hey, God's saying stop. God's saying don't do this. Wait up. Scripture is advising against this for a reason it's good for you not to and then to have you know folks do the opposite and and we see it all the time not that we're not all susceptible to this okay or guilty of it for that matter but in this moment where we're at i talked about this a few times and and maybe it's why i i come back to it a few times here it's very easy for us to to give in to Satan's lies instead of leaning into faith. Faith can be hard because we're in the moment. You and I, it's it's like we're looking through a straw, right? And all we can see is what's in that, through that tube. That's, that's all we see as far as history and time goes we're just seeing a very limited part of it and it can be very easy for us to think that god doesn't have everything under control because all we see is a moment god has the eternal perspective right now god's not confined to time and space god exists outside of time and space. And so for us to think that we understand what God's doing is ridiculous. And it only leads us to worry and doubt and to mistrust God. Jonah knew <laughs> Jonah knew that God would spare that city. Jonah knew that when he preached that they would that they would turn. He just but he didn't want them. He didn't want the outcome. He had a straw mentality. God is working everything together for good. And so we have to step back and go, God, I don't see it. I'm limited. God, in faith, I trust you. Now, if you recall, a couple of weeks ago I preached and I gave you a definition of trust. Trust is giving up control. Real trust, real faith is giving up control. Real faith is going, God, it looks bleak and big and worrisome and scary. But God, I know that you hold all of eternity in your hand. So let's not be Jonah today. Let's be Peter. Peter, in the Gospels, is on a boat with the other 11 disciples. And Jesus had stayed behind to pray and said, I'd catch up with you later. And they're like, okay. So they get on the boat. Storm comes up there in a bad way. And... All of a sudden they look out and there's a ghost, they think, walking on the water. Well, the ghost isn't a ghost. The ghost is Jesus and Jesus is walking on the water. And Jesus calls out and says, hey, guys. And they're like, uh, hey. And he's like, it's Jesus. And they're like, yeah, right. And he's like, no, it really is. And they're like talking to each other and like he's walking on the water. And yeah, he is walking on the water. And One guy, 12 guys on the boat, one guy, just one, Peter says, if it's you, Jesus, tell me to come. Jesus is like, come on. Peter jumps out of the boat just on the word of Jesus. Come. And he walks on water. Now here's the deal. As long as Peter stayed focused on Jesus, he could walk on water. The moment he took his focus off of Jesus and put it on the winds and the waves, the storm, Peter started to sink.
you're ahead of me, aren't you? When we keep our eyes on Jesus, and when we press in, our faith grows. And our ability to see the miraculous becomes possible. Remember our theme for this year here at Shoreline Community Church? Big dreams become big miracles. Or another way we put it is God-sized dreams become God-sized miracles. The way we experience the God-sized miracles is by getting our eyes off of the winds and the waves. Putting them on Jesus. Don't be Jonah. Let's be Peter. Let's get refocused and allow Christ to reign. Lord, I pray that today would be a turnaround day in our faith. That if it's grown cold or we've put our eyes on the wrong things, may we refocus today and put our attention, our focus, our trust, our reliance on you. I ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, I'm sorry I took a little lot longer than normal. My apologies. I wanted to give you the update on where we're at. Go fill out that survey. Let us know what you're thinking. Hey, we love you. Thanks for spending a couple minutes with us. I'll see you tomorrow.